Hi, I'm Lori George, an acrylic artist with Let's Make Art. We have Keenan here running the camera today. Hello. Thank and you. today we are going to be painting our mountain landscape. I feel like yodeling, but I don't know how to do that. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is from our acrylic starter box, if you have that. So let's go over our supplies. We have Let's Make Art paper, some, some watercolor paper here. And we have our paints. So today we're going to be using titanium white, primary red, primary yellow, primary blue, and Mars black. You're also going to want something to put your paint on. So today I'm using a paper palette. If you have the acrylic Starbucks, you might have a sample size of the palette paper that you can use, or you can use any palette of your choosing. I'm also going to be using two brushes today. I have the three quarter inch flat wash and the half inch flat brush. Those, and then you'll probably also want a little bit of tape to transfer your outline and a and some graphite paper mm. for our outline. Here's our landscape outline. You don't have to use the landscape outline. You can draw your own landscape if you'd like, but if you want to give this a try, go for it. And they can find that on our website, right? Usually? Absolutely. Okay. Free download. Awesome. Just got to give us your email. Okay. That sounds like a fair trade. That's a fair trade. <laughs> fair. Uh, a couple things that might be nice to have. Um, I like to use a palette knife to add some different texture. You can also use the end of your paintbrush for that. And a paper towel or shop towel for dabbing off extra water. Oh, one other thing I like to do is I like to have an extra piece of paper to use as a brush board to wipe off my extra paint. So I'm just going to have that to the side there. Okay, so I always recommend watching the tutorial all the way through before you actually start painting because then it'll give you a really nice idea of where we're going um, because you may decide that you want to make a different version. So I'm going to show you a couple versions. So we have this one, which is kind of the one we've been showing. But then there's another version to say if you don't want to do flowers, you just want to do grasses, or you want to kind of change up the season or the landscape a little bit. You don't even have to do clouds if you don't want to. Lots of options. So I'm going to give you the basic recipe, and then you can make it your own. Excellent. You like that? I love that. Yay. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay. Let me grab this step sheet here. So if, if you got the acrylic starter box and you have the step sheet, You'll have all of these steps laid out to make the project. Now, I will tell you that when I paint, I tend to kind of bounce around. That's kind of my process. And so I will try to follow the steps pretty closely, but I may deviate just a little bit. So keep that in mind. Deviations are good for Deviate. the heart. Yeah, I do tend to kind of bounce around. All right, so let's talk about our steps. We are first going to put in our background. Then we are going to put in our, the base layer of our mountains. After that, we'll do foreground part one. Ooh. Then we'll do the first layers of our clouds, foreground part two. Then we'll add some shadows to our mountains, clouds, and our foreground, add some flowers, and do our final touches. Nice. Does that sound good? That sounds great. OK, let's get started. So one thing that I like to do when I start to paint is just think about why I, why, why I want to paint. Am I here? And think about your why, you know, what brings you here? What makes you have the desire to paint? Sometimes I paint just to paint and just get out the feelings and the emotions. Other times I want to paint to express myself or paint to play with colors or paint to learn and to grow in my skills, get some practice. So think about your why. You don't even have to have a reason, really. Just paint to paint, right? Uh, yes. Okay. I would have added to that, but you said it beautifully. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And I think the reason that I bring that up is because we need to be more forgiving of ourselves to not be perfect. And remember that we're not here to paint a masterpiece necessarily. You probably will, or you mm -hmm. might. I believe that you will. <laughs> but we're, just, we're here for the fun. We're here for the education. Yes. We're here for the practice and just to enjoy ourselves. And maybe so even a hangout kind of sesh. Maybe even a hangout session. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just remember that. All right. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to unwhite our paper. The paper, we want to get rid of all of the white background here. Hide the so, paper. Yeah, hide get, the paper. Just get rid of it. And so we're going to do a wash. And a wash, in, it kind of implies that you're going to add more water. And I'll show you. If you're familiar with watercolor, you're probably familiar with washes. 
What I'm going to do is get some yellow paint on my palette, and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of red. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze out my paints on my palette so they're ready to go. I like to organize my palette from the lightest value color to the darkest because I don't want to contaminate too much. And I know if I get any blue touching my yellow, it's going to be green, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> color theory. And I'm not as mad if I get a little bit of black in my blue, you know. Okay, so go ahead and get your palette set up. And I'm going to take my three-quarter inch wash brush here, okay? And I'm going to get that wet. You always want to start with a slightly damp brush. Make sure that you moisten everything up in here in the belly of the brush, not, don't, not just the end. Okay, dab that off here on my paper towel. And I'm gonna pick up some yellow here, make a pile, and then I'm gonna pick up just a touch of red with the corner of my paintbrush, okay? What I'm trying to do is create a gold color. That's pretty good there. So after I've mixed and I get, kind of get the color that I want, I'm gonna add some, quite a bit of water to it because we're gonna be making a wash. And it just means a thin layer, a thin layer of paint. Okay, so once you have that, I just want you to kind of go at, go for it and start covering your page. Now, I like brush strokes showing through, so don't worry if it doesn't look like an even coating because um, the reason that I wanna paint my background this nice gold color is because with my landscape, most of the um, composition is sky, which is blue, a cooler color. And this opposite color is going to peek through in a few instances and kind of add some nice depth it's like a and gift. contrast. Say that again. It's like a gift. Like a gift? Yeah. Yeah. Like a sneaky surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep going until I cover every single white dot. And if your paint is dragging, you can add water and just start kind of mixing it on your paper as well. Sometimes I'll leave the white on my paper when I'm starting a new piece, but I have found that when I cover it up, I'm just, I'm a little more adventurous and ready to go as opposed to kind of being a little more like uh, huh. antsy about it. If that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like I've already done the job of covering up the white and taking the pressure off of making something perfect. It's like a permission slip. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah, the permission to to do what? To, to continue painting. on, to power through, to yeah. create more. There we go. So I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. Okay. Okay, so once your background has had a chance to dry, we can move on to the next layer, which is our outline. So we have our outline here and you're gonna need some graphite paper. When you're using the graphite paper, you want to put the shiny side down. And if you have the acrylic box, starter box, your graphite paper will be inside the Let's Make Art Matter um, envelope or clear bag really. Okay, so I'm going to, you know, at first, sometimes you'll find, especially when with wet media like acrylic is a wet medium, you're going, you might have some paper curl. If I'm in the middle of painting, I'll just kind of like bend it back a little bit to kind of get it flat again. So if you have that problem, don't worry, you can bend it like this. And then um, at the end of the day, when you want it to be flat permanently, you can just mist the back of your painting with water and then put it under something heavy or inside of a big heavy book. We'll put it there for 10 minutes till it dries and then you'll have a flat painting. So don't fear, don't worry about that. Pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> From experience, for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna do the shiny side down here and then I'm gonna put my landscape on and I'm gonna line up the bottom of the paper for my landscape here. So that way this line will go to the bottom of the page. And then I'm gonna kind of check to see if I have it somewhat centered. There we go. Mm. So our paper that we're working on is nine by 12. And then, so this is just a, this outline is a regular sheet of paper, an eight and a half by 11. And so it's a little smaller than your actual piece, but I tried to make the outline so that you can just continue the line to the edge. Smart. <laughs> 
Keenan is really good for the confidence. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so supportive. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna paint that, uh, tape that down, and then using a pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and trace my lines. I'm gonna probably start over on this side and then do a full line this way. So I'm gonna start doing the with the um, horizon line right here. There are a few little waves and bumps. You don't have to make it perfect. I think the main thing is you don't want a perfectly straight line because we want it to be somewhat straight, but it's gonna have some variation there. And then I'm gonna come here and do the mountains. You mentioned in another video that when you use an outline, you like to use a colored pencil. I is do. It, is that usually though, when it's more of an intricate outline? Or, yes, or because then outlines? I can, you know, that's a good point. So this one, I feel like since I've got a lot of linear, um, like horizontal lines, right. I feel like I can follow those like rows mm -hmm. a little bit more. And my color pencil wasn't sharp. Oh. <laughs> so I'm using a regular pencil, <laughs> but thanks Keenan. Yeah, you're welcome. No, but really though, yes, using a colored pencil or even like a colored pen, um, can help you know like where you've been and where you're going. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna do this little patch down here in our foreground. Okay, let's see if we got it. We did. Now, I pressed a little hard. You don't have to press that hard. Now with acrylic though, we're gonna cover all of this up. So don't worry about your lines um, too much. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna kinda continue this line there and continue that line there. This is where you get to decide what you want to do. There we go. Nice. Okay, so there we have our basic outline. So the next step is to put in our sky, the base layer of our sky. I'm gonna show you on this original here. We start at the bottom of, now you can't see because it's behind the mountains, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna start and we're gonna make a gradient. So we're gonna start light and we're actually gonna start with kind of a cool blue color and then we're gonna slowly go up into a medium value and then we're going to go up into a little bit of a darker value and a little bit of a warmer color so we're going to add a little bit of red at the top there because hmm. what the sky actually gets darker as you get c closer to the what is it the apex what's it called yeah yeah <laughs> and so like if you ever look at a um the horizon it's lighter because of atmospheric perspective hmm. and then it gets gradually warmer and uh darker, more concentrated. Interesting. That's how our eyes see it. Yes. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start with white. So I'm gonna still use my three quarter inch brush for this and I can tell actually it's not all the way cleaned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that now. I'm using a wash basin for my water because I like being able to clean the brush on the ridges inside here. Helps to get that paint out faster. And then if I need to, I can kind of do some final washing on that other side. Okay, that's pretty good. So to do your gradient, we are gonna start with quite a bit of white. And then, you know, I, I know I'm gonna need more white for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on my palette. Okay. And I think we're good on blue. All right, so I'm gonna put white here and then I'm gonna add some blue. Mix that in. And I like to start with a little bit, especially with our, my darker, colors like blue and black because I can always add more. But white is really kind of the dominant color that we have here. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna add some more water to make sure that my consistency of my paint is kind of gliding and not dragging. Okay, and that my brush is loaded. So I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna paint in, I'm gonna hold my brush horizontally like this and I'm gonna use this edge here as my guiding line to follow the outline of the mountains. Now I am not worried about it being completely perfect. In fact, I like variation in it and so um, don't hesitate to deviate or to go rogue. Go rogue please. <laughs> like variety is so welcome. Yes. And then also if you get um, see how I'm getting some drag there and I'm getting some of the background showing through? I like that. Mm. And that's part of why we have kind of that nice 
warm background. So uh, don't worry too much about that. Okay, so now I'm going to um, add a tiny bit of yellow into that mixture. Here we go. I think I said it wrong. It's warmer, well, it's lighter down here. I'm gonna add a little bit of my yellow to make it a green blue, blue green. Sorry, that was, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna keep adding blue and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black because I don't want the pure blue color in my sky. I want a little, to de desaturate it just a little bit. Okay, go ahead and add that white in and then I wanna keep going while the paint is wet so that I can keep blending. So I'm gonna keep, um, so one thing I'm noticing right now is this looks much cooler than this blue. Mm. And I remember from the original that I was adding yellow until we got towards the top. You kind of think, why would we add yellow in a sky? Well, sometimes the sky is a little bit warmer Okay. I would not have so it's not a green either. yeah like it's not green right um, and really color is very much relative to what is it's next to so if I had um, when I put those colors next to each other it looked very cool but if I had had it when I had it by itself it didn't look that cool <laughs> it oh. looked really cool <laughs> Laura. so I want you to embrace the the different the strokes the brush strokes the texture that comes in there um, don't feel like you have to just make it perfect because this is what's going to make the sky just look really interesting and, and and cool and then just keep going so add some more water i'm going to add some more blue as i get up i'm going to be adding more blue so i'm going to go ahead and keep going here okay Keep blending it in. I, I like the idea of having some bands of color on my sky. Add a little more blue here and I'm gonna add a little touch of black just to make sure that I'm not getting too vibrant and saturated. Okay. We're not trying to get carried away. Right. We've got a process to follow. Yes, exactly. Calm down, paint. <laughs> so this already is looking very um, cool to me, like with the blue up here. So I'm going to kind of embrace that and, and put that in. I'm going to add some water too to kind of keep, keep it blending some more smoothly. Mm. And I like that right there. So if you get some gold showing through, don't feel the need to cover it up. Cause remember we already covered the white of our paper, so we don't have to worry about some covering everything now. Texture. Yeah. Like now we can kind of just be a little more free. Okay, so as you keep going here, you're going to keep blending and blending. And remember that when, when acrylic dries, it dries a tiny bit darker. So I'm not worried if this looks light on top of here. I'm just going to keep blending it in. And I like the gold here that shows up, that comes through. Looks really nice. It's like another little surprise. Yeah. It's so, like our uh, golden tickets shining through like a continuous permission. <laughs> this is deep. <laughs> <laughs> this is very deep. So at the very top, I'm gonna, and I said it wrong earlier, like it gets cooler as you go up into the atmosphere, up into the sky. Okay, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of red. That's a great color. Look at that. And then I'm gonna blend this in a little bit more. Yeah, I kind of like that. So I'm gonna bring it down just a little more. If you feel dr your brush kind of dragging, just add some water. And don't be afraid to like kind of I'm doing a U shape as I go back and forth. When you get closer to the horizon, due to atmospheric perspective, it looks, you, it's pretty much straight across. Like if you have clouds down there, which we're gonna get to, and then it kind of starts to curve as you go up. At least that's, what, that's how we see it anyway. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my sky and see if there's anything that I wanna change while I'm still here. And I see that there's quite a bit of contrast between these two colors. So I'm gonna just wipe off most of what is on my brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take my white and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue and then a tiny bit of black. So we have a blue green with white, so we made a blue green tint and then we add a little bit of white, black to desaturate it. 
And I'm going to kind of come in here and see, okay, what does that look like? It's getting closer. I'm going to add a tiny bit more blue in there, a little bit more water. Yeah, there we go. I'm kind of blend Ooh, that in. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. So that gives a little bit more of a seamless transition. And oh, you see that there? Mm -hmm. I didn't mix my brush. I didn't mix my paints perfectly, and, but I like that. I so do I'm that. I like that. Because when we look at the sky, we do see little variations, don't we? Yeah, we the do. The color of the sky. Okay. And then just to kind of round it out, I'll add a little bit of white towards the bottom. Because I want, I want behind our mountains to look kind of kind of white and light and you'll see why in a little bit here okay all right blend that in and there we go while that is drying we are going to go ahead and move on to our mountain range here now when we look at mountains we see the front range of mountains they're a little bit darker and then as we go further back they become more um, they become lighter and have less contrast so we don't see as much detail and that's due to perspective so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself organized if you're following along on the step sheets this would be step three okay so using a cool gray, so to make a cool gray, I'm going to need some white. I'm going to add some more white. You're going to use quite a bit of white on here in this project. Actually, in general, acrylic, you use quite a bit of white. So if you're going to buy, if you're going to get like a, you know, a large tube of paint, make it white. Okay. <laughs> That's the way to go. Trust me. Okay. So to make a cool gray, I'm going to add black to my white here. And see how I'm kind of keeping my cool colors right here? Yes. I like to kind of keep them on one side of my palette. Okay. So that I don't mix too much. Well, I don't would mind. You, would you be willing to move your palette up just a skosh? No problem. How's that? Thank you. Yay. Okay, so I want a little darker than this. So I'm going to add some more black. And then I want to add a touch of blue in there. So as we look at mountains too, like the, they get cooler into the distance, like more uh -huh. blue and, but, well, actually they don't get more blue, but they get cooler and less saturated. Okay. So less contrast, less saturation and less detail. Okay. So what I'm trying to get here is I want a nice darker value for that front range of mountains. So I'm gonna kind of keep mixing until I feel like, and see, I'm, I'm just adding a little at a time because yeah. I don't want to have to mix a ton. I love that gray. It's like a, it's like a blue steel. Blue steel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna kind of squish my brush here so that I push the paint towards the front of the brush or the toe of the brush so that's not gloppy here. And that will help me to get more crisp lines. So we'll adding a little bit of water to make sure that your paint is fluid. You don't want too much water because then you're gonna lose your opacity, but we should be good here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the toe of my brush to make, you know, I can already tell this is a little too soupy. Uh, so I'm gonna add some more white. Soup okay. is meant for elsewhere. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add some black. Kind of get the same, yeah. Soup's in the cabin on the other side of the mountains. <laughs> Not the ones we're painting. That sounds like a great place. It does sound like, like just a great like place. Like soup in the mountains. <laughs> it's a snowy day here, and soup sounds really good. It is very snowy. It's very snowy. It seems to be snowy every time I come to Hamilton, actually. It seems like there's a pattern, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So I think, I know that my acrylic is gonna dry, like my paint's gonna dry darker, but I think I want an even darker for this front range. So I'm gonna add even a little bit more black. Honestly, that's kind of how my process is. It's a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of, I, I'm adjusting all the time. I change my mind sometimes too, mm -hmm. and that's okay. That's part of the process. Painting is, um, I've heard it described as problem solving. And I think that's very true. Like mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out how can I express this or how can I show something 
How can I represent something? I like that. Yeah. You know what? You can switch to your smaller brush too for some of these details. So this is my half inch wash. And really, if you have something smaller, whatever you feel comfortable using. And when I say half inch wash, it's also considered a flat. I usually call it flat. If you come from the watercolor world, you might call it a wash. A flat. Flat brush. So the, this front mountain range is going to taper off towards the edge here. So I'm just kind of kind of let it go like that. Mm. Okay. All right. You're not gonna worry about too much because this is our base layer. We're gonna come back again and add some more layers. And so we'll fine tune it then. Right now we just kind of want to get our um, basic foundational layers done. Got it. Got it. Oh wait, so now let's see. Where are we going here? Okay. Okay, so that's a nice range there. Let's see. Hold on a second. I need to look at my <laughs> outline. I'm confused. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. So this is actually all dark. I was forgetting, you know, I made a lot of versions of these when I was trying to put together this tutorial. I'm a little bit of perfectionist and I kept doing it over and over again. And so I was getting confused for a second, but no, this is all mountain, all mountain all day meaning like the, the second range of mountains, it starts back here. Mm. Yeah, so I was confusing myself. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> yeah, I know, I do that too, don't I? Or, yeah, we all do that, I guess. Oh yes. It's good to see a little uh, familiarity and confusion you know, <laughs> with, within other humans. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So understanding. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, so back here, I, I don't care, I don't want these to necessarily be super crisp because as things get further off into the distance, they are not quite as detailed or crisp. Uh, so I'm not worried about that showing. Okay, so there you have the base of your mountains, the first range anyway. And so now we're gonna go through and do the second range in the background. And all I'm gonna do for that is add some white because as, they, as the mountains get further back in the distance, they lose some of their saturation and get lighter okay so when you add white mm -hmm. you're you're creating more tint or adding more tint we're adding a tint to get a lighter adding value a tint. Yeah. yeah okay thank you yeah and actually you know what that reminds me I'm gonna tint I'm gonna add a little bit of blue here okay nice although yeah we should be good all right so now I'm gonna go back here and just kind of do this mountain range that's further in the back and again this is our base layer so this is just kind of blocking in our shapes and we'll come back later and add more detail so if your brush is getting kind of gloopy you can just kind of squish it onto you guys can't see that you can just kind of squish it onto your page like that or like rub it off of the edge of something still can't see that let's see can you see this yes rub it off of the edge of something so that you can get more of a tapered um, tip of your brush or toe. All right, so I'm gonna do that just so I can kind of get some of these lines a little more crisp. I do really like working with flat brushes because I feel like they're very versatile. Like I'm really not just kind of using the corner of the brush to get some of these fine details in between the ranges. And I'm gonna leave yellow, any yellow that decides to stay, I'm, I'm gonna welcome it. I feel like flat brushes are a lot more firm Yes. So it's, like, it's almost like tr you can push on them a little bit and really get that tight line with them. Yes, especially with the synthetic uh -huh. fibers. Okay, and so I'm totally fine if this is kind of has an airy look to it. And as you can tell, I'm not being super, perf super perfect about all my lines. I like having the variation. I like having the yellow pop through. This is where you get into more of a painterly style or an expressive style as opposed to a more realistic and exact style, style like the representational type art. We're, we're kind of doing a more painterly, more brush stroke loving style. I like that. You like that? Painterly is a good word. Yeah. 
All right, so we've got the base of our mountains, the base layer done. So now we can move on to our foreground. Sweet. And while, while we're moving on, all of these layers are gonna be drying so that we can come right back and keep working. All right, so I'm gonna wash out my brush. Have you ever painted a landscape, Keenan? Uh, does, well, mm, I think mountainscape. Mountainscape will count. Kind of, sure. yeah, I've done that. Yeah. It was not good. Uh-oh. But it was my first try. So it was practice. And it was... It, it was good practice. Yes. <laughs> and the biggest help that I have ever had is take a step away and then come back to it. And so I basically discarded it, and I came back the next day, and I asked, whose is this? This looks really good. So... And it was yours? It was mine. Really? Yeah. That and funny? no one had adjusted anything. I double-checked. <laughs> you thought maybe somebody came in yeah, and like maybe, painted it. Uh, yeah, and, maybe Sarah came in. To help you in. out. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a nice thought, but yeah, you know. No, no one that was, was there. you. you no did one that. was there for me. You know, it's funny. I've done that before too, for sure. See, so it's normal. For sure. Okay, so we're gonna do our foreground here, and in the foreground, we are going for more of a green color. All right, and then we're gonna add a little bit. Um, Yes, this is when we do it. So before I completely mix out, wash out my brush and switch to another color, I want to put in this dark line right here. This could be some foothills. This should, could just be some shadow, oh. but it kind of helps to, with the dimension, the depth of our painting. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and use this smaller brush and I'm gonna use the pile that we already started and just add some more black. It almost separates the two planes for me. There it's you go. A, like I think that's what I might have been trying to go for there. Yeah, it's like a third layer without being a third layer. I like how Keenan knows the answer. <laughs> he knows what I'm trying to do, but he forms it in the way to let me save face. So thanks, <laughs> Keenan. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, when you're, yeah. You forget things sometimes when yeah. you're on the spot. All right, so I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to kind of... Um, hold my paintbrush from the end and just kind of like run it around, run it down. Cause I don't want a perfectly, you know, like the same thickness everywhere. I want it to vary. So I'm just kind of like wiggling my brush and kind of pulling it along here. Okay. And I don't care if it skips a spot or anything like that. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. In fact, I might even kind of like add a little more something over there. The foothills that I've been on are, they look that rough. Yeah. You know, well, so that's perfect. They can have they can have some shrubs on them. Yep, they can, shrubs. You know, so it, you don't know. There's a lot exactly. of things. Exactly. And I know too that I'm going to still be coming in here to put in my foreground, so I'm not too worried about um, perfection. Perfect. Me either. Okay. So I'm going to wipe off my excess paint and rinse out my brush. Ooh, I just thought of a phrase. Oh yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't don't try to achieve perfection because no one's going to be doing an inspection. Hey, I like that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'm gonna wash out this brush. Now with acrylic paint, if you're not as familiar with acrylic paint, it does dry quickly, like quicker than like oils and things. Um, but that means it also can dry on your brush. Ah. And it's permanent, so it can permanently dry onto your brush. <laughs> and yes, that has happened to me. Poor brush. Oh. I, like uh, when I finish a painting session, I usually have used multiple brushes and I'll go and I'll wash them out. And I've gone down the next day or the next time I go to do a painting session, I'm gonna wipe off this extra paint that's kind of sitting on the ferrule of my brush and then continue to wash it out. Um, and then I'll notice, oops, I forgot one. Uh, it was under something or under a piece of paper. I have had fairly good luck though using um, brush cleaner, the master's, what's it called? The master's brush cleaner. Oh, useful tool. Yeah, if you can get it like soon enough, you might be able to save it. If it's been weeks or months, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> worth know. a try? Worth if it's a, your it is favorite worth a brush, try. It's always, always worth, a try. worth a try. Well, and I like to paint with brushes that are a decent value. Um, but not necessarily like super, super fancy expensive. Mm -hmm. But I like to have multiples of those because I like to work with multiple brushes at a time so I can kind of keep my colors without having to rinse my brush off. I can kind of have my blues and my greens and then another brush for my warm colors. Um, that way I don't have to wash it out as much. Nice. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and make a medium gray green. So I'm going to take some yellow here and let's make sure you guys can see this. And I know that what's here is not gonna hurt this color mix that I'm making. It's within the same realm at least. Okay, so medium that's value. That's a good green. That's a good green. I want this to be a little earthier. So I'm gonna add some black to tone it down. Look at that. That is also a good green. And this is the base layer for my foreground. So I want it to be a little bit darker or a little bit less um, vibrant mm. because I want to put a lighter layer on top for some texture. So this will create kind of a little more depth and then I'll, I'll be able to add like some highlights on top of that. Okay, so make sure this is nice and fluid and then you're just kind of brush this on. And again, I'm just kind of going back and forth and I am not concerned about covering everything. You can use the smaller brush if that makes you feel more comfortable. If you want to get cleaner edges, just use the toe of your brush, kind of the edge there. Okay. And this patch right here, this is kind of gonna be in our, the very front, the very foreground of our painting. If you get some green on there, it's no big deal because we're actually gonna be painting that a dark green and a little bit here. Darker than this green? Darker than this green, wow. yeah. Yes, yeah, so actually a lot of times when we are, if you look at a picture of a landscape, the very front items can, very front like trees or shrubs or whatever it is can often be very dark. Mm. Sometimes we think that our shadows should be, oh, or our dark sense. objects should be in the distance or yeah, somewhere mean, else, but it can vary. That makes sense with what you said about the mountains. Yeah, yeah, and honestly like you, it really depends too on lighting scenario, what time mm -hmm. of day, whatnot. So I'm gonna embrace and leave the yellow. I like it. And I honestly wish that I had left more on this one. So we're gonna go with that. Okay. All right, so what I wanna do now is I want to add some black to my green here and kind of get a really nice dark green value. That might even look black on or brown on camera. Yeah. It looks pretty good, actually. It kind of looks like a little gray. My main thing is I want to I want it to be a contrast from this other green, which I think it is. So I'm just going to kind of brush that on there. Ooh, that is a good green. Cover this spot. Now you can you can absolutely do this exact color palette and kind of the, copy the way that we're doing it. Um, but if you feel inspired to do it a little bit differently, go for it. And I always say too, like I like to paint in multiples. So if I was doing this at a home, I probably would have done at least three at a time and done my wash. And then I would go through and just vary them a little bit. Hmm. And then by the end of the day, I have three of the same three paintings. Project. Yeah, like a cool. landscape, but I might like, I might change one to have more uh, of this golden field here. Okay. Or I might have one without mountains or I might do the clouds a little bit differently. All right. so. That is great for blocking in our base layers. Nice. Next, we are going to, um, actually this says I'm gonna add a little bit more black in here. So I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of straight black on a fairly dry brush. And to get a dry brush, it, it doesn't necessarily mean no water, but very little water and very little paint also. Mm. So I'm gonna kind of brush that off. And then I'm gonna come in here and just kind of add that on top here. Oh, that's nice. So I just want this to have some texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and build that in. Have you come across a technique or a challenge no. that has been especially difficult for you in the painting, in your painting world life? Um, yes. Well, and anything specific, like for example, I struggle with trees. Ah. And then I also struggle with mixing the color brown. Mixing the color brown. You know, I think I've definitely had struggles and tried like puzzles that I'm trying to solve and figure out. And I've had some success in figuring them out. But yeah, I think that happens a lot actually. I think if we are not familiar with something, like honestly, I haven't painted, painted a ton of trees. Mm -hmm. And so if I went to go paint a tree, I might have some struggle as well. But okay. I think the important thing is to have the confidence in yourself 
that you believe, you know, I can figure this out. I can figure this out and I can learn the steps to make a tree. And knowing too that as you practice, like you, re you really will get better. Perfect. And then you'll also yeah. probably develop your own style as well and figure out the way you like to make trees. And a new hobby. And a new hobby, yes. Okay, <laughs> so looking at our step sheet now, um, our next step is going to be actually to add a light layer of green here at the, at the top of our foreground. So using the same uh, mixture here, or you can make more. Now I do like to kind of spray my palette down sometimes to make sure that it stays, keeps from drying out too quickly. Of course that's runny, so I'm gonna kind of make a new green here. So remember blue, yellow, and black. That was a lot of black. <laughs> <laughs> this is an example of what you don't wanna do. That's quite a bit of black. All right, that's okay. What, I'll, what I do if I kind of have an, an oops moment right there, I'll pick a corner of my pile and start working that rather than trying to change the whole color of this pile. That way I'm not having to um, use as much paint and, and whatnot. Okay, so that's pretty close. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some white to that to make it just a little more, a little bit of a lighter value. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of choose it's gonna kind of, kind of similar to this line that we put in, kind of like the horizon type line. I'm just gonna follow that general look. You can tell I, can, I already need this to be lighter, but I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. Mm. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna follow this line and just kind of choose how I want it. I don't want it to be like completely can, parallel to the mountain line. I want there to be some areas that are a little bit wider and some that maybe are a little thinner. Okay. And so you can kind of just decide how you want your view to look. And again, I'm holding the paintbrush from the top because if you want to paint loosely, you gotta let go. Gotta let go of control. <laughs> and holding it up higher on the handle Definitely takes away some of your control. If that's not a natural thing for you to let go of control, that's, that's normal. That is normal, yes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and brush this off. And then we're gonna move into the next step, which is the base layer of our clouds. Clouds, to me, actually, clouds, to answer your question that you asked earlier, have been a challenge for me. Ah, but okay. I was determined to figure out how to blink paint clouds because I love clouds. I love clouds. Mm. And so I can show you a progression for sure Perfect. of my cloud paintings. Thank you. And I still am learning because honestly the clouds are so many ways that you can paint clouds. And I'm going to show you a way today that is somewhat expressive and loose. Um, but this is not the only way. I have a nephew named Cloud. Do you really? Yep. Oh, that's C cool. C-L-E-O-D. Oh. So it looks like Cleode. Cleode? But it's Cloud. Oh, nice. Never heard of anybody name that. That's cool. It's from Star Trek. Is it really? Yep. My dad might know. <laughs> you watch sure Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now I'm going to mix a light gray. Sometimes I think when we're trying to paint mountains, we might think, okay, uh, not, not mountains, clouds. We think, okay, clouds are white, right? So we yep. just grab the white and we paint the clouds. Yes. But actually, if you look closely at clouds, they have a lot of variation. Not a lot, but they have some subtle variations to them. Sometimes there's a lot, actually. Oh, the, oh yes. Yeah, and there's even some warm colors and, and the shadows can be at the bottom and also within the cloud, depending on how close the cloud is to you, the different you know, curves of the cloud. And what time of day? Because the sunset And what time cloud? of day? That's oh, right. Good night. That's right. If it's sunset, you're going to have light coming up and bouncing off the bottom of the clouds. Yes. I have, you, is it that your favorite? Sunset? S sunset. I cannot get enough of sunset. With, oh, I just love it so much. You and Missouri that. has the biggest clouds sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to take that as like, you know, number one state with the biggest clouds, but it has big clouds and they're big just skies. gorgeous. Yes, big skies. The um, nice thing about the Midwest, definitely like I love mountains, but the nice thing about the Midwest is sometimes you can look all the way around and just see the entire yes. um, sky. That's fun. 
Okay, so what I'm doing right now is creating the base layer for my clouds. And as you can see, these clouds are not super round. Um, they're a little, they have some brush strokes, a little more of some angles and just kind of a free, a free um, feel to them. Okay, so like I'm not gonna go in and do some bubble clouds for this. So I challenge you to try to not think about painting clouds, but just think about putting these shapes in, mm. okay? Because sometimes when we think about the object we're trying to paint or portray, we have an idea in our head of what it should look like, but instead it's better to kind of look at it and paint what you see as opposed to what you think, Oh. right? So that is a kind of a big Whoa, um, that was step. deep. <laughs> like if you were gonna paint an apple, you might paint you know, draw it or paint it a certain way, but then if you actually look at an apple and just kind of just follow the lines and the relationship between the lines, that's how you can become a better, um, better at drawing for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, my three quarter inch brush and I'm gonna start putting in some clouds. Now, if you're like me, this might be a little bit of a more hesitant part, but don't worry because at the end of the day, if you don't like what you created, just let it dry and you can create your gradient again and try again. And yeah. we're here for you. And we are here for you, yes. <laughs> and I have a, pot, a stack to show you that ones that I just that didn't make the cut, you know? So I get it. <laughs> but the other thing to remember too is like, don't be too hard on yourself. Give yourself some space to play. And you know, the first layers you may not love, but then as you get into some of the next layers, you might be like, oh, that's it. That's finally, that's the brush mark that made the page, made the cloud. So when we, when we look at the sky, we have, some perspective that we're that we see so like th with the atmospheric atmospheric or aerial perspective um, we objects appear less with less detail less contrast and less saturation and with our linear perspective we know that clouds are getting smaller or things are getting smaller in the distance the farther away they are the the smaller and closer together they are going to be so with clouds like, linear perspective there's linear and there's aerial there's actually very many there's a few different types of perspective we talk about oh. linear probably the most um and that's fine the basic thing to remember is that as things get further into the distance they're going to get smaller and they'll actually get closer together so with clouds my clouds up here are going to be bigger okay but then once i get down lower they're going to be smaller and closer together and um I'm also trying to create this nice U shape here. Okay, kind of maybe like a fisheye, not quite Ooh, yeah. so um, dramatic maybe. And then as we go to the horizon, that's gonna level out or appear to level out when mm. we're looking at it. Okay. And also we know there's different types of clouds too. So do what you want. Just pick the clouds you wanna paint and, and go for it. If you wanna do the style that I'm teaching, have at. Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna pick I'm gonna kind of, I don't want my clouds to look like a pattern. And so I wanna kind of offset my first cloud. So I'm actually right now looking at kind of the thirds of this page. So if I divide this page into thirds this way and thirds this way, I want to put a cloud here because that is usually a very pleasing place for um, composition hmm. to have. It's called the rule something. of thirds, I believe. Yes. Oh, I know what I wanna do. Let me show you real quick too, like, these strokes. All right, so with the clouds, I am going to just kind of, I'm gonna make some strokes like this, okay? Lori, would you be willing to do strokes like that on that darker green on the same page? Definitely. Perfect, thank you. Then and we I can want, see it on that side cam for us. Oh, for sure. And I want the, my paint to be fairly fluid, okay? All right, so I'm kind of going in a little bit of an upward motion too. Okay, so that might be what I do as a base layer for a cloud. And you can make some smaller ones too. I'm kind of starting at like a 45 degree angle and I'm just pushing my brush down and then flip, flinging it out. Almost like a Like swooping, lifting it out, swooping, swooping, motion. swooping motion. Thank you. Yeah. I'm learning, I'm picking up these terms here. Okay. <laughs> and so some of my clouds are gonna kind of be like that like real thin lines where I'm just barely touching and tapping the paper and others might have a little more oomph to them. Oomph. Oomph. And don't be afraid to use like the belly of your brush and kind of try some different strokes 
There we go. Okay. So if you can do that, you can do this. You can do anything. You can do it. So feel free to practice a few strokes too. But this is not, let's just go for this. We're talking too much about it, right? Let's just go for it. Yeah. Let's yes. be about it, you know? Yeah. All right. Make sure you have some fluid paint. And then again, I'm going to pick right here to kind of make my first cloud. Ooh, nice cloud. And I want to avoid a big puffy kind of cloud that maybe we're Cumulus used to seeing. Cloud. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do kind of like that. The trick here is to leave it alone. So get it, get something on there and then be able to leave it instead of messing with it. That looks just so like I'm going to trust it. Okay. And then I'm going to do another one over here. Let's see. Keeping in mind that I don't want it to be the exact same shape and size as this other one. So I'm going to actually make this one a little bit more of a bigger cloud. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave that and I'm not going to worry too much about any of these little things sticking out because if you, if you actually look at clouds, they are not a perfect form. They have a lot of air obviously in them. Although they're so imperfect. Anything goes. <laughs> yes. Anything okay. goes. Anything goes. And I'm going to add another one in here. Okay. The thing about this too is like less is more in the beginning. Right now I just want to kind of get my composition together. Um, maybe one there. Maybe one kind of going off of there. And then I'll probably, maybe I'll put like a couple. Maybe one's there coming off the page and maybe have something like that. Okay. And then, so these clouds are going to be the ones that are closest to you. So they are larger because they're closer to you. Okay. Okay. And then as we get down into the, towards the horizon line, our clouds are going to start to get closer together. They're going to appear closer together. So I'm going to kind of do some. These clouds look great. Good. I was just wondering. <laughs> and. You know what makes clouds so lovable? What's that? Their imperfection. Yeah. <sighs> They're imperfectly perfect though. Like they're just. They are. I still, I just love looking at the clouds. I'm going to keep saying it over and over again, I think. Beautiful. I associate clouds with picnics. Really? I don't know why. Because hmm. I think maybe because when you go on a picnic, it's like you have an obligation to lay on your blanket or your <laughs> tablecloth and look at clouds. Nice. It's required. It's required. Okay. Hey, I have to remember that next time. I think, I've been, I think I've been breaking the rules. <laughs> Not doing that every single time. So as I get closer to the horizon, my, I want my, the shape of my clouds to sort of level out. And remember, you can have some clouds behind your mountains, too. And I, I want to have a light touch. I don't want to overdo it, um, even though I can tend to overdo it. There we go. And then I want to kind of embrace, too, this idea of, of a kind of a U shape here, like a nice curve. Okay. So go ahead and just take a look at your clouds and decide if there's anything else you want to add but also know that we can come back and add more in a little bit here. Okay, so that is your base layer for your clouds. Now we're gonna go and move to, um, let's see what it is, steps, this next step here, which is to, oh, we're gonna add another layer onto our clouds. What do you know? So Ooh. I'm gonna add a little more white. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bonus time. And now what I did in this tutorial is I, I wanted to add a little bit of what is in the foreground to the clouds because a lot of times the clouds reflect what is oh. on the ground slightly. And this is your painting, do it how you want. But if you want to add a little bit of maybe the green that we were using a few minutes ago, you can do that. And I, it's very subtle, but this will help give the clouds also some dimension. So I'm actually going to add a little more thinking about the idea of the dimension here. Okay. So this is like, this is still a very light value, but we've changed the color a little bit to be a little more of a green gray. So that means that we've added, so um, that means we've added some warmth by adding that yellow because we already kind of had some, we have some, what I'm trying to say here. 
We're giving it a little more oomph, and we're gonna be able to add some depth, kind of like a shadow. Mm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through and I'm kinda decide, okay, here's the bottom of the cloud. You know, I can't see that very much. I'm gonna get more. And I am gonna add a little bit of. I used to think that the shadows and clouds were all cool, but actually there is some warmth. If it's the sun, if the sun is out, you know, and uh, that makes they're sense. reflecting. Sun is warm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so I'm just going to kind of do a few little, and if you really want to paint in a painterly style, you can hold the brush at the end. And I'm just going to kind of add just a little bit to. It's amazing how much. Some of these. The shape or I guess it's the shape, how much it That's can change do. with just a little bit of paint. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like that cloud changed shape when you added that. And you know, it's hard, it's harder to paint white things or things that we think are white because we don't, we don't, we're not as familiar maybe with the shadows and the highlights that we would use for white since we consider white to be like the brightest color. And shadowless. The lightest value, right. But when things are, when things appear white to us, if we look closely, we can see that there are some variations depending on lighting, depending on what it is. White flowers are kind of tricky. So I've heard reason. that dog fur is tricky when it's white. Dog fur? Yep. Yeah. I would love to, we have a great Pyrenees at our house and I would love to one day be able to paint her, but I don't, I've yet to learn those great skills. Uh -huh. so yep. I want to paint her in a nice expressive style. So that could be a goal. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add some more, another layer to our foreground. And this time I'm gonna warm it up a little bit with some more yellow. So let's go ahead and make a pile here with yellow and a little bit of blue. And then we'll add some black to kind of tone it down. Oh my goodness, I did it again. <laughs> 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 that green just wants to live. It does. It's There we go. Okay, so I want this to kind of be a nice bright warm green. A nice yellow green. And what I want to do too. So with this with this painting, I'm we have a vanishing point kind of in here where we have the lines all going back towards that point. So with this layer, I'm gonna think about that and I'm gonna just kind of work my brush strokes that way. It's not, it's gonna be a subtle effect. Um, and later we'll add some more detail to show it, but I wanna go ahead and just start thinking about that. Okay. Cool. And so I'm gonna leave some of the background still there. And then, so I'm gonna decide that's my point. And again, with perspective, we, Things look like they are getting smaller to the background. Isn't that wild? That blows my mind. It's cool. It is super cool. I still remember like elementary school when we had an artist come to school for um, a presentation. And I remember what? he he taught us like, you know, the railroad tracks that converge into, a, you know, a vanishing point into the distance to portray um, depth. And then I also remember he brought in silk flowers and he had us, I'm gonna scratch into this by the way, with my palette knife. Yes, please. He brought in some silk flowers. How about that dried quickly? You know, there's a trick. If it dries too quickly, just kind of add a little layer on top of wet paint. Ah. To kind of, yep. And then I can scratch in. Good trick. And since it's just green underneath, it's gonna be subtle, but I still like, I like the lines. I get that little piece of paper. So this artist also brought some silk flowers and he had each of us hold the flower in our hand and he said, don't draw a flower, draw what you see. So that was actually the first time I ever heard somebody say that. Whoa. Draw what you see. And so I remember being like, oh, like, okay. So I was just kind of drawing the relationship between this front pedal with the side pedals. And I was just, I was just focused on the lines and the curves and the relationship between them. And I actually looked at my page and I was like, that's nice. Like I felt really proud of myself and what? maybe that was the moment I was like, I love art. That was it. I don't know. All but that, that is artist. a definite like core memory that I have of just a new world kind of opening up to me wow. and understanding that. Like that sounds like a magician too. I know. I have no idea who he was. <laughs> oh, he's so. a traveling art spirit guide. <laughs> and he was there for you in your moment of creativity. He was. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more yellow to create one, another layer here. 
And the thing about it is you might be having your aha moments now and I still have them with different things. And so it is a, it's a progression. We keep building on the skills that we have and we keep learning more and more. It will never stop, hopefully. That's hopefully. how I feel. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of a lighter, a lighter green. And I, the way I lightened it this time is with yellow as opposed to white because I wanna keep the vibrancy. Mm. And then I want it a little more fluid. There we go. And so I am going to kind of squish off some of the excess on my brush so I can get a nice tapered point, load the toe. And then I'm going to actually kind of make some lines by gently tapping and dragging. I'm gonna purposefully kind of lift up a little bit here and there because I don't want straight um, uh, implied lines. I want them to look a little bit um, broken up. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of put here, I'm just gonna kind of light go there, okay. I'm gonna kind of just trust myself too. And I can always go back and add more, right? So. Always. And when they're coming straight towards you, it's more of a straight line. And when they're going this way, it's gonna to start to level out, kind of this way. I'm gonna vary where I have the lines too. Okay. There we go. And then what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and scratch in again. One thing that um, the scratching in can do besides adding that texture is it also breaks up any solid or um, ma masses of color. Okay, there we go. Nice. So now we have some highlights on our foreground. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add some grass up here to our, our little patch there. I'm gonna go ahead and um, rinse out most of this or brush off most of this yellow green color. Ooh, that's nice. That is nice green. Okay. So I, I keep a brush board and a paper towel handy um, so that I can wipe off most of my paint. Because one, my paint water will get dirty really quickly if I put too much paint in there. And also I wanna minimize how much paint is going down the drain. All right, this doesn't have to be perfectly cleaned out because we still are go staying within the green family. But now we can start with a little bit of a fresh, fresh brush here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to start with some dark values, making some grasses. And let me kind of show you how I like to do grass. So let's get some black and let's add some yellow. Did you know that you can make green with black and yellow? No. <laughs> So look, watch this. Well, that's not much to do that. That was not exciting. <laughs> look at that. What? It makes a very earthy green. Very because, earthy. Now, why that's do you nice. think that is? Um, now I, that you've been through a couple tutorials with me doing color wheels. So I know that to get black, you mix all of the colors or the primary. A combination. Yep. Color. It's a combination. Mm -hmm. So I'd assume with the tones, the undertones of black would be a... a Blue. Something, yeah. Something so that makes the a yellow. Greenish. A yeah. greenish. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Like a blue. A blue, and then you combo the yellow, and you get more yep. greenish. Yep. Yep. Because black is a combination of colors. And when yeah. you add the yellow to it, the blue is going to be re reacting, and it's going to lean green. Okay. Nailed it. Good job. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to load my brush with this darker color. And um, to do grass shapes, I like to just kind of Hold my brush straight up and down and then tap and pull. Tap and pull. Tap and pull. You can also try this. Oh yeah. Just flicking. So that's gonna be a little more painterly. Um, you can also try going from the bottom up like that. That's probably what I do, because if you I will do because if you look here, this is the more tapered edge toward the bottom, mm -hmm. meaning the last part where I pulled up. And so if I start from the bottom of the page, I can uh, come up and they'll have kind of that tapered point at the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that to our page. Now, this is very dark here, so I wanna make sure that the value that I'm putting on first is dark because I want some depth, but not so dark that it doesn't show up. So let me see here, what would happen if I do this? Ooh, that's, that's pretty dark, nice. but it's not bad. That looks cool. This is good for a first layer. 
Okay, so I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna kind of add some grasses. You know what, for the sake of people being able to see this, I'm gonna make this just a tiny bit lighter. Okay, so I'm coming here, I'm gonna add some grasses. Now, grasses are not all straight up and down and they are not all the same size and they are, don't necessarily grow perfectly straight in a row. So think about that when you're putting your grasses in to kind of have some randomness to your patterns and, and know that some grasses are gonna lean as well and, and they might crisscross. So don't feel limited by maybe our idea of what grass should look like. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do now, so that's just kind of a base layer to give some depth and then I'm gonna add some more yellow to our mixture here and create kind of a lighter earthy green, yellow green here. Okay, and now I'm gonna come in. So with each layer that's, that, that's lighter in value, those strokes are gonna be the ones that you notice the most when you look at your painting. And so I'm gonna be a little more selective each time that I change my, my color, my, the hue of my uh, grass. Okay, so now with this, I'm gonna kind of think more about this. I'm gonna make a little clump here. So I'm pressing just a light touch and a flick, flick, flick. Okay. And my, f the grass is kind of coming just right in front of the viewer. So it's coming off the page here. I'm loving that second layer. Yeah, it really starts to pop. Yep. And I can put a, a few like back here to indicate that maybe there's some grass growing further into the distance. And then when I do that, they're gonna be a little bit closer together and a little shorter. Okay, and then I'll just kind of add a little bit there. And I know I've got more layers coming, so I know that I don't have to make this perfect. And I want to force myself to pull back a little. No, not worry about making any final, final decisions. Go ahead and just scratch in if you want here. Might not, this might not show up, but I can tell that it has a little bit of texture and I like it. All right, so now what I wanna do is add a little bit of blue. I like to have some cooler grasses as well. So I'm gonna do some blue, a little more blue. So this is getting more to like what you might consider like a grass green. Yeah. But I, I think that's a little too saturated. And so how can I desaturate that? Complimentary color mixture. You're right. So I could add black or let's add a little bit of red. Oh. See what happens. But you're right, complementary colors. So on our color wheel, we have green and the complementary color is red. So if we add a little bit of red, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see it. Okay, so let's have a little bit here. See the difference between that and that? Yep. If I add some more. Both really good greens. Yeah, so, but it really does help. I mean, it just helps make it more earthy. Earthy. Now I know by looking at this, that this is a little too close to the value that I had before or the color that I had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more blue, a little more red, and then I'm gonna put some white in there also. Okay, that was a lot of white. <laughs> I don't mind that actually, because I feel like if I add just a tiny bit more blue, that'll get where I want it to be. Okay, so we have kind of a cool blue green. I'm gonna come in and um, I'm gonna smush off some of the excess because I want a nice, and if it's, if you're having trouble getting your paintbrush more tapered so that we can really use the point of it, the toe of it, you can just kind of smush it through a paper towel and that, that kind of helped push the paint towards the top. Like a tube of toothpaste. Of like a tube of toothpaste, yes. Okay, and then I'm gonna load my brush, the tip of my brush, okay? All right. So I'm just gonna start from the bottom again. I'm just gonna flick up. Ooh, see that? Yes. Just a nice, um, nice other color. And this is definitely still not my final layer, but I'm gonna be a little more selective and this will be a little more sparse. So I'm just gonna kind of add it in a few places. Okay. Yeah, maybe one kind of a diagonal. Okay. More. The one thing I'm thinking too is that these are eventually going to have flowers, so we do want some nice stem uh, shapes mm -hmm. there. So this is where you can play. This is where you can go through, and if you're using the same colors um, throughout your painting, meaning the same primary colors, you're you're using a limited color palette. You have your five colors that we started with. 
you can create mixes from these colors that will go nicely together. And so play with it, add yellows, add black, add blue, you know, play with it to get kind of the mix of colors that you like and that appeals to you. And that's, that's really part of the fun. And when I do it, it's different every time. So now I want something like a little brighter. So I'm going to mix my, what I have here with some, I add a little bit of blue and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and I think I'm gonna add even more yellow. Maybe start playing off of our foreground there. Okay. Ooh, look at that. I love how many different shades of green are on this painting right now though. Yes. I've lost count. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, were you counting? No. There's 12. Maybe. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know the number. No. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of touch. Look at that. Those are, that's going to create some highlights. Yes. Okay. If you want finer, um, I'm going to consider this color actually kind of the stem of my flowers. So oh, I'm going nice. to kind of bring that in a little bit more. I will have okay. this whole time too. The clouds have changed a little bit. Because they've dried? Mm -hmm. You're right. And speaking of that, sometimes when I am painting down here, I'll add a little touch to my sky. Oh. I think I'm going to hold back, though, because this is pretty, pretty green. And we already did kind of add some green, but you could do that if you wanted to. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and add white to this layer right here. And this will probably be our last layer for our grass. And I'm going to kind of push the paint off. If you have like a little edge or something that you can use, you, you can use that to get the paint um, pushed down onto your brush. Very technical. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of come and add some very, very, I can actually tell that's a little wet. So I'm going to dab off some of that. Okay. Just add a few little touches. And I'm trying really hard to not, um, not make a pattern. So I don't want it to be completely evenly spaced with the exact same heights of my okay, gr grasses. Okay, so inconsistencies. Yes, to make it so feel a little more, more haphazard. Yep. Okay. Okay, and if you want um, to use your smaller brush, you definitely can. Okay. I like how you've used that one the majority of the time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. So those are your grasses. We're going to let those dry. While those are drying, we're going to move on to um, adding more dimension to our clouds. Now, I, I don't mind this color right here, but if I add some blue to it, I think I would like it a lot more. Oh, okay. And we can add that to our clouds, like a very, very light touch. So I'm going to wipe most of it off. Then I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of blue. Now I'm kind of see what I get here. Add, oh, some, nice. add some white. And I, I kind of like that. I might add a tiny bit more blue. I'm kind of pulling from the edge of the blue. Okay. I kind of like that, but I know from experience that I want it to be a little lighter. A little goes a long way. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make sure that's nice and fluid. And then I'm just gonna come up here. I'm gonna kind of, working with the shadows that I've kind of already put in, I'm just gonna kind of add a little more, a few little like wisps. Just maybe pick like two or three places that you wanna add that. And I know we're gonna add more, so I like that. And I might even add a tiny bit down here in these. I'm just very lightly just kind of grazing the paper with my brush, just kind of some tiny little hints of another color. Okay. Now, nice. if you, where did my palette knife go? If you've, if I feel like this is too much, I can use my palette knife and kind of scrape. Okay. You can also oh. use a damp cloth. What? Or a damp, you know, paper towel or something, and just kind of like. Blend like that. Okay. Ooh. Now I know that I'm going to be adding some more white. So it does not bother me to have a little more of a contrast down there. Okay. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and add some more white to our clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and 
wash out my brush pretty well. You might get to a point too where you have your water gets kind of murky. Don't worry too much. Okay. Yeah, mine's getting pretty dirty. All right. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to find a space on my palette or go ahead and get a, open up a second sheet here where I can get my white going. And maybe Keenan, would you mind giving fresh water? water? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to still not go for straight white. We're gonna save the straight white for the very end for just some final little tiny details. So I want to have, have the, my base be white, but I wanna add again a little bit of, let me put this like this, so you guys can see that still while I'm working. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black, okay? I just wanna dab a little at a time. A little bit of black to make a gray. And then I want to add a little bit of blue to kind of um, cool it down. Add a little bit of color. And then really that kind of blends into my palette. <laughs> the palette has a little bit of a blue, a blue gray uh, tint. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to add a little water when that comes back. Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. Super helpful. Thank you. I need like a giant one of these, I think. Like or mega three size or three. Yeah. Or a closer sink or a hose. <laughs> a hose? Yeah, you know. Something. <laughs> awesome. All right, so here I have my mixture that's almost the exact same color as the palette. And I'm going to add some more layers of my clouds. So remember, to do our strokes, we're just gonna kind of make little um, like smile faces or little, yes. you know, S upward happy scoops. swoops. Okay. And I don't wanna do too much, but I do wanna vary the width of them. So sometimes I'll kind of do them from this side, and sometimes I might wanna do a full um, stroke like this. See that? As opposed to like that. Ah, uh, I see. You get some different um, looks there. And I do want, I want some of the back, the um, base layers to still show. But this is still, this is a point too where you can kind of say, oh, I don't love that little piece there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it, make it what I like. All right, and again, this is not our final layer. So this is more just kind of adding another layer of dimension, okay. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. We don't fuss, right? And then I'm gonna hold it straight up and down and get some of these layers here. And I just like, I just barely wanna touch it. Very light. You can even do kind of like when we pulled here, you can just kind of pull and just let the brush decide. <laughs> okay. All right, so that is looking nice. Let's let that dry just a tiny bit. And move on to our next step, which is gonna be to, ooh, we're gonna start, actually we're gonna start adding our flowers, but first let's add some dimension to our clouds. So while I have this gray color, I wanna come back here and I want the, looking at this now and seeing all of the components together, I want this back range to be even lighter. So I'm gonna add. Dimension to the mountains. Dimension, did I say something else? You said clouds. Oh. Thank you for catching that. Yep. Dimension to the mountains. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. What would we do without you? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use my smaller brush. We, we know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what? I missed that. You said, what would we do without you? Oh, we know the answer. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did have a sub. And anyway, it's not the same. It's not the same. That's okay. You it's know okay. what? It's fun. Either way, you get fun. to paint and have a great time with our friends. Yes. You know? Yes, it is fun, it is fun. Okay, so I've got a nice gray here, and what I did, I did some white and some black and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue. I don't want this to um, look more saturated because as things go further back, they are less saturated, but I also don't want the stark grayness of it. You know, does that make any sense? 
I think so. You think so? I'm on the same page. Okay. So I'm actually going to darken this because I want I want a lighter layer, but I don't want it too white. Let's see what happens. I keep adding too much black. I'm noticing that that's kind of a habit of mine. All right, there we go. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some water too to make those a nice fluid consistency. And come through and just kind of add. Now let me look at that and think, how do I feel about that? I think that's a little too light. So let's go into this mix here. A little more, and I'll maybe touch a little more. A lot of when I paint is, this is my process, I use trial and error and I'll kind of add a little touch of something or, and if I don't like it, I add a little touch of something else. So this is absolutely how I paint in real life. Um, although I do tend to paint fairly loose even looser than this potentially. But what I'm doing is kind of adding, I want to make this a looser landscape. Like this, I like the looseness of this as opposed to being kind of tight and perfect. And I hope you'll embrace that as well. I'm embracing it. You're embracing it? Yep. Nice. And one thing that I, I do sometimes too is I kind of, um, let me finish that little part and then I'll show you what I do. So I'm just kind of tapping on here. Like I'm not doing a fluid mm. stroke. And then what I want to do is I'm going to wipe off a lot of this paint and kind of doing a, br a dry brush technique. I want to just kind of like feather what's back here. Because as things get further off into the distance, they also lose detail. So we don't necessarily see the sharp edges or outlines of our mountains. Is that cool? Um, I'm <laughs> speechless. Yes, that is very I Actually, cool. I looked up at Keenan and he was like, yeah. I'm like, wait, I thought maybe I was doing something wrong. I'm like, no, he really is just like in the no. moment. You did so Love it. Please. You can't do anything wrong here. Right. Okay. So I'm going to, now I'm going to take the lighter portion of this and I'm going to um, add just a few little touches. And what I'm going to do, so when you have mountains, a lot of times you see kind of the little cuts, the little paths or the little kind of ridges of the mountains. And when I look at them, I know they, they, are fairly horizontal, um, if that makes sense. They're kind of going down in a horizontal oh, way. Like yes. they go, they don't go straight up and down. Yeah. They're kind of elongated. Definitely more is what steep I see. when you're closer to them. Yes. And right. A, so from this perspective, yes. yes. And so that's kind of what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a few little places to add a little bit of detail. And with this back mountain range, I really don't want to fuss too much with it because it's less, it has less detail because we know it's farther away. So I might actually just even leave it like that. Now what I'll do though is I'll go up to this front mountain range and I'm going to play with this a little more. I want to add a little bit of blue to the mountains. Oh. Do you ever look at the mountains and think they look kind of blue depending on which mountains? No, I've never done that. Do you have any mountain ranges that you're most familiar with? Keaton? Uh, that Keenan? Keaton? Uh, Keenan? Keaton? Keaton? Oh, Keaton here. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean to do that. I don't... Have you been in the mountains much? N not in Kansas, in, not just so you know, or in Missouri, there are not many mountains. No. Now in, actually in, um, what, what is it? Eastern Missouri. Yes. There are some more hilly or like southeastern. Yep. You're getting a little more. A little bit more, but I don't yeah. go there very often. No. So I don't have a lot of experience with mountains. Um, if I do, it's with the Utah mountains. Okay. My brother lives in Cedar City, and he ha they have red mountains there. Let me go ahead and add this blue in here while we're talking. Go ahead, Jack. Keep going. Yeah, they just, you know, they have red mountains. Red mountains? Yeah, in Cedar City area. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they're very red. Utah has some really, like, they have a lot of variety to their mountains. Yeah. I know when we've been um, traveling through, like, in southern Utah, there's some really pretty, pretty mountains. So I'm mixing right now a darker shade. A darker value, and it is a shade because we add black. We know it's a shade uh -huh. <laughs> because We've I want to create. That. I want to create some shadows in my mountains, and so I'm going to kind of pick now. Um, this band of mountains right here that could be more than one range. It doesn't have to be just one range. So I might decide. You know what? I want to kind of pick where there's kind of a line here, and this kind of comes into a new range of mountains. And I want. I want this to be fairly fluid. I love that there's still so a I'm gonna golden ticket add sneaking through. Golden ticket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to kind of add some strokes of, and 
if you see, I'm just really not being super particular of it. Now, there are some things that are guiding me, my decision making, and that would be following the angles of the mountains and then not having, and making sure I vary the length of my strokes so that it looks a little more realistic and less patterned. So those are kind of the things, the skills that you pick up that will help guide you when you're painting loosely. Because, huh. you know, I used to think, you know, to paint loosely, someone just shows up and they just do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it just comes straight out of them. Yes. But knowing the rules and understanding how things work, composition and colors work together and things like that, those will guide you as you're making your decisions. And the more you do it, the more it just becomes like innate. It just becomes part of the process. So that's why practice is so important. It is. All right, so I'm gonna come and kind of, I'm just gonna kind of use the, the edge of my brush and just kind of tap and touch these mountains just a little bit. So some might come this way. I'm gonna kind of vary that like that. Um, a little bit there, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and I like this color. I'm gonna add a few little touches here for highlights since I did shadows here, but not really much for highlights. And then I'm gonna go ahead and even get lighter, add some white. And here's where, um, as you get lighter, you're adding your highlights. You, those are the things that you're gonna, you, the eye is gonna see first. So that's when I get a little more particular, but still not fussy, right? No. Yeah. Okay. So I've got kind of a lighter value now. And I'm gonna come, I wanna make sure it's mixed. Actually, I don't want a really bright white. So I'm gonna make sure it's mixed real good. Okay, and then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to touch. I already have some highlights started. So I've already kind of decided where some of the ridges in the mountains are gonna be. So I'm gonna follow that and kind of just like tap it. <laughs> see how light I was, can you see it? And maybe I'll tap that. It's like I'm literally just like tap, tap, tap. But that looks amazing. You know, so that's how you can kind of um, represent things, but still keep a nice loose style. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here and do kind of the same thing. And I don't wanna do too much. I just wanna kind of just little, hint. little hints, yeah. Okay, so I actually feel pretty good about that and feel like the mountains are pretty much done. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kind of clean up this green area here because I feel like there's a lot of contrast between here and this band. Mm. Um, this band is kind of, you're kind of thinking about some grasping further into the distance, so it's getting a little less saturated and a little bit lighter. But I think I can introduce a little bit of green to it and still, and so it can kind of flow a little better. So what I'll do is, well, let me wipe off what is on my brush here. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna start with yellow. Anytime I'm making a green, I almost always start with yellow. Since blue is a strong tinting color and so is black. Okay, so quickly, see how quickly that became. Of course, I didn't use a lot of yellow to start. Here we go. That's still too bright. And so to desaturate it, I can pop in a tiny bit of red. Ooh, that's getting kind of a nice, with a warm, if you, keep, if you kept adding red to this mixture, you would get a warm brown. So I still want this to be a little bit less brown. So I'm gonna add this yellow in there. Ooh. Okay, and then I think if we add some white, we're getting really close. One thing that you can do is you can take the paint that's on your brush and kind of hold it up to whatever it is that you're wanting to paint. And I can see that, you know, that's, that's not too bad. And let me kind of test it out here. So that, that actually, I think will blend nicely. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this is fluid here. And then I just want to kind of lightly go over this because I like how this cool green ties in with the mountains. Okay. But I do want this warmer green to help tie into the foreground. Okay. Okay, so once again, we're gonna ha do some expressive loose strokes. I'm gonna hold my brush by the top of the handle and I'm going to just kind of, kind of run my brush 
over oh. the top. And you can twist at your brush as you're going. You can decide. Oh, but I just that looks don't want to so fuss. Good. Okay. And now what I want to do too is I want to kind of break up some of this solid color here with my palette knife while it's still wet. Okay. And that's very subtle because it's a light layer, but I think I like it. I, I think like that works. That. Okay. So what are we going to do next? Let's see. Um, I kind of want to add, tep like while I have this on my brush, I kind of want to add just a couple little, mm -hmm. little like touches of it so that it tie also ties in with that little spot we did. Okay. So I'm going to stop there for that and I'm going to wipe off my brush. You can see all of the different um, greens and blues that we've been making. Yeah, you've created a pretty great brush board there. Yeah. It might become something later. It will actually. I have a lot of these and I love working from them. <laughs> okay, so we've, we, we still have another layer of clouds to do, but our mountains are pretty much done. Our foreground is pretty much done, but we also have our flowers to do. So I think we should start with our flowers next. Okay, so to make flowers in a, in a loose, expressive way, let me kind of show you what I like to do. Get my brush nice and mixed here. All right, so I have my red here. Let me get, let me get this paper. Actually, I'm gonna use a different brush, a little scrap paper from earlier. I'm gonna take some red and I, I want, I'm gonna, I'll, just for, to show you, I'm gonna add a little bit of white, make it a little more opaque here. All right, to make a flower, what I like to do is load my brush and then I'm using the corner of the flower and I'm just pressing down. So like kind of stamping down. And if you wanna pull, you can. So you push down and pull, that would be a much longer flower. But if you can just kind of push and push, push and even if you kind of dab just a tiny bit you'll get a little uh, like a smaller flower what do you think i love those <laughs> tap flowers hey you know you got them on tap not bad and see how, how i lighten layer Ooh. how you can kind of make you, you got your highlights and your shadows in there actually you're kind of your medium Whoa. value in your shadows and then if you got even lighter even lighter you can add like some highlights in there. And when I'm not going to be super fussy about like making it exact, you know, on this, I just kind of want to flick and just give the impression of flowers there. Our brains will do the filling in. Our brains will do the filling in. You're right. It's that nice, like that impressionistic um, era that was so popular that yeah. we still seem to love today, right? Yeah. All right, so looking at our original or our inspiration, we have, these are fairly, um, there's some variety of colors here, but we want to start with the deepest, darkest color to make sure that we are creating some depth, okay? So let me brush off what I have in my, right here because I want to clean it out so I don't have any white on my brush. Hmm. Okay. Lorda, would you be able to push that up it. Yes. Uh, wonderful. Of Just a little bit. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my red. Pick up some red here. Make a little pile. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to uh, to get a darker red. I could add green, but I don't have any green mix, so I'm going to add just a tiny bit of black. I don't want it a ton of black. And I want to make sure I have enough paint to make sure I get some nice uh, what did you call them touch flowers T or tap, what did you flowers. tap flowers yep. yeah so i want to make sure i have enough paint on my brush to get a nice nice tap flower tap. all right so as i'm thinking about my composition i do not want my flowers to one be all in a row mm -hmm. two to be the exact same shape and size mm -hmm. so i want to vary that and i want to vary my height and also my color. So I'm gonna pick a few places to put this particular shade. And I might actually even make it a tiny bit darker. There we go. So like, and I know, I, and I might make some of these bigger too. 
So I'm just gonna kind of pick a spot like that. Oh, that's a good flower. Okay, <laughs> there we go. And I have one kind of coming off the page there. Yes. And then maybe I'll have one that's a little higher that's smaller. So maybe it's further back into the distance. Maybe one there. Oh, that's a good and idea. Maybe like a couple there. Okay. Yes. All right, and now all I need to do is just keep adding white and we're gonna keep adding layers. So I'll add some white over here, get our next slightly lighter value. Okay, and I'm kind of gonna do the same thing and I'm not gonna, I'm going to want to do some overlapping. Like I'm not gonna try and like give every flower its exact mm. place because if we were looking at flowers like kind of straight on, we wouldn't, we would see the overlapping. So, ooh. Feel free to let that happen. All right, for instance, like that, or like there. And I might even have some areas that have more of this particular color. Something might be coming off the page too there. Um, and maybe like a couple little ones up here. Okay. I like that fine. Add some more white. Those are great colors. You like that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is fun. This now, is fun. If you don't, if you want to do like blue and purple flowers, Ooh. you could do that. I have a version where I did that. Or yellow. That could play off yellow. the light green really well. Yeah, actually, yeah, like a yellow orange Ooh, would be really nice. The, the golden ticket color, yep. maybe? Yeah. 100%. All right, so I'm going to come through and add some more. I might make this kind of my more dominant color. But again, like, I don't want to think too much about it. So I'm just going to kind of tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Yep. <laughs> okay. Got those flowers on tap. Less is more when you get into the, these types of details. You can always go back. But I know from experience that I've ruined several paintings by, or not ruined, but I've had a little bit of regret when I go a little too far. So... If the more that you can learn to kind of have a little bit of restraint and a little bit of just taking your time in terms of um, placement and thinking about that, then the better off you'll be, I believe. Okay, some of these I might go ahead and add on top because I want it to be kind of a highlight. Okay, there we go. Keep adding more white. And what I want to do here now is kind of start with a little more of a, well, not yet, not yet. I was going to do dry brushing, but I think I want to add one more layer. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, that's a nice. A lighter flower. Vary the heights, okay, and the sizes. Okay, let's do one more, one more layer of, I'm going to wipe off most of this so that I can really get a nice light value. I think I need more white. I keep adding white. I use a lot of white paint. Okay. So we're going to get a nice light, light, light pink. Can you guys see Very that? Very light. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of do a few little gentle touches. Now, actually, you know what? I want to do a little bit more dry brush. So I'm going to wipe off a lot of my paint. Okay. And then just pick where I want it to go. That's not light enough. <laughs> <laughs> back to the drawing palette. Or Dr paint palette. <laughs> back to the palette say, Back to the board. drawing board. Okay, here we go. So light, light, light pink. Brush off some of it, okay? And then I'm gonna go for it. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's nice. So I want that dry brush look. I don't want like the solid necessarily. Um, mass of color and I uh, here I'm kind of touching some of these other um, flowers and then I can see that I there's a couple that I just want to kind of go over again with a different so you, as you can probably see you can like go forever <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and just keep going and going and going um, but really the idea is just to kind of make an impressionist type style expressionist um, little bunch of flowers okay all right, what do you think? I love it. So now I'm gonna go through and just, where it's still a little bit wet, I'm just kinda gonna run my palette knife through it. I love adding texture with palette knives or like your end of, end of your brush, scratching in, called Scriffito. 
we talk about that in the <laughs> we talk about that in the acrylic beginner series as well. Kind of cool. All right. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute, and then the final touch when we come back will be to add some of the front mm. grasses and then a few little white dots. Okay. What I wanted to do now is oh, actually, so while I have this pink, I'm gonna wipe off most of it. Let me use my I'll use a brush board here. I'm gonna wipe off most of it, and then I'm going to probably come into this white, this lightest value here, and add some water, make it nice and thin. And guess what I'm gonna do with this? I can't. <laughs> Ooh, wait, I can. What am I gonna do? The clouds. The clouds, you are yes. right. And I don't want too much liquid on here, so I'm, I really do kind of want it to be well, I know I want it fluid, but I don't want, um, I don't want it, I still want to use a light hand, if that makes sense. A light touch. So I'm gonna start down here. Okay. And I'm just gonna kind of drag. Now I happen to really like pink in the skies. So I might do a little more th of this than I did with the green. I don't know anyone who doesn't like <laughs> pink in the skies. So I'm doing, I'm keeping my lines a little more horizontal as we get closer to the horizon, because they kind of even out and become a little straighter but then as I go up I'm gonna kind of touch the bottom of some of these clouds okay very subtle so subtle. Um, and I'm gonna kind of keep in mind with the kind of u-shape motion that we were thinking of that we were kind of trying to do just oh, a tiny bit that looks so good <laughs> I feel like we're being really quiet with the clouds I we are. like very whispery <laughs> okay the, I'm really liking this We've got a few more touches to go. Our final, our final pass through. Let me clean my brush. Final pass through. <laughs> and I actually see this brush sitting here, and so I'm gonna. Oh, you know what? Actually, what do I say on here? Which brush do I say to use? I don't say. Mm. So you can use whatever brush you want. Trying to see if I want to use this brush for the, f yeah, I do want to use this brush for the final cloud, like the more white. But let me wash this one out. So you can see with all this brush washing why I might like having a lot of brushes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I just wash them all at once. Ish, if, if I, I know I have to wash it out if I wait too long. And anytime I'm done with a painting session, I make sure I wash all my brushes and I've learned to lift up papers and things, make sure I don't miss any, right? I was gonna say, almost <laughs> Kind of revealed that brushes. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> almost, thanks. <Yeah. laughs> when we were talking about memory earlier, you yeah, don't we really forget. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a dirty brush. I'm gonna pick up white and I need more white also. Is that in the way? Okay. I had, I had a lot of fun creating this first box, this first acrylic box for Let's Make Art. And um, I knew I wanted to do a landscape. And so I, I really tried to figure out, I love the three quarter sky, one quarter ground mm -hmm. landscape style because you can really emphasize the clouds. So that was fun to create. Now I'm gonna pick up, you can pick up a teeny tiny little black. I just kind of brushed over here where I had some gray because I, I don't want this to be pure white just yet but we're close very close all right so nice and fluid and we're gonna okay we're gonna add some strokes to our clouds these ones are gonna pop so there we go and maybe I have one kind of going like that like that I'm gonna use the belly of my brush too like that I don't want to take away um, I don't usually scratch into clouds. You could do a little bit. I don't want to take away the background completely, so I'm going to try and be mindful of that. Okay. Mm. I want to keep in mind that clouds are, you know, they're made of water vapor or water droplets, and so there's space in between them. They're not a solid mass. So I want to kind of embrace that. I like how that one turned out a little bit because you can Me still too. see a lot of the other layers. This one. I love how much movement they have. I'm going to be okay with. Yeah, like you get, it feels like they're Yeah. doing something. Do a couple, a couple of touches up here. 
And I don't have to stay necessarily in the parameters of that cloud. I can kind of make it a little bit wispy. In fact, I might even just add like a couple just really light wispy areas. And if it's too much, see, I won't take my finger and do that. But let me show you how to not get paint on your hands as much. Just take a paper towel, kind of blend that out. If it's not working too well, just get it a tiny bit wet. If you get it before it's completely dry, you can usually work it a little bit more. Okay. Where else? All right, let's add some down here. Uh, kind of little, some little touches. Kind of, this is where you get to kind of decide which clouds are going to be kind of the star, right? Which ones are going to really stand out? Um, it's easy to get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to just keep going and going. But you know what? It's okay. Like this is your world. This is yeah. This is your your fun that you get to do. This okay. is your domain. Your domain, yeah. Like let's let's just be happy about it. Um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I still have my final white touches, but I'm just gonna kind of look through and see if there's anywhere else where I want to add a little bit of white. And I think I wanna add a tiny bit more highlight to um, the mountains. So I think I'm just gonna pick a couple little spots. Yeah, I'm gonna give even a lighter touch here. Brush off some of that and just do kind of a dry brush. Yep, I'm really just kind of going in back over and touching little parts of the ones that we already did. Not really creating any new things there. Maybe a tiny bit back there. There we go. So those, that'll dry still a little bit darker than what's showing now. But I might just kind of touch the top of this also. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and while our cloud layer is drying, let's go ahead and add the final grasses for our flowers up in front. I'm going to need some more colors. So I'm going to get some yellow. And I still have some blue on this palette. So I will still just use that. And I don't care if this pink mixes in since I want desaturated earthy colors. So I really don't mind. There we go. And I think I want a little bit of black. So for these final stems and highlights, I do want a light value, but I don't want it to be too intense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of get the hue that I want, and then I'm gonna lighten it with white. Mm. So that's, that's pretty nice. Let's see what our original had a little more blue. So I might actually do that, I like that. Let me add some blue to this. Okay, and then lots we'll of some white. What I'm doing is I'm kind of pouncing my brush to get some of the paint that's inside of it, inside the belly of it, into my mix. So it doesn't surprise me later. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good call. So I know it's mixing into. Sounds like a voice of experience. Yes, very much so. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna use the half inch brush to make my grass or my stems, whatever you wanna, however you wanna think about it. And then I'm just gonna add kind of a few touches here, okay? And I can tell already that I want this to be a little more tapered so I can get kind of a finer edge. So I can do that by wiping off some of my paint and also by adding a little bit more water to make sure it's fluid, but not too runny. Okay, let's try that. Yes. Nice. Okay, so I just want to kind of add little touches, all right? So that this shows just some idea that these are little stems for the tulips. It has some little dots. That's the kind of idea of it. That color looks so good. You like that? <laughs> okay, and then maybe I'll add like a couple little touches there. A couple little dots there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna leave that. Yeah, that's kind of a bright, like a nice yeah, bright nice. green. This is very, it feels very springy to me kind of that spring green color of like new grass or new vegetation, whatever you want to think of it as. All right, so I don't think I have any other place that I want to add green. So I think we are done with the green. So brush that off, we're getting close. We're getting close to being done here. Oh snap. Yes, uh, acrylic paintings can take more time. There's just more layers and some drying time involved, but 
it's a lot of fun. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just keep working in multiples. So when one's drying, I move to the next. And when it's drying, I move to the next. And by the time I'm done with them, I come back around to the next one. So that's fun. OK, so the last thing we're going to do is just add some final details. Oh, one thing I do want to do is I want to add a little bit of shadow on the ground for the clouds. So the way that we'll do that is we'll just kind of make a gray again. So it'll take some, a little bit of white, a little bit of black. And then I'm going to go ahead and add um, a tiny bit of blue. Now I want my shadows to be very thin on the ground because shadows are not really a huge block, a solid block usually. Usually it's just kind of like there's some lighter areas and some deeper areas. And so I just kind of wanted the idea of some shadows on the ground. So like even wipe some of this off my brush. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of pick some spots. Now, most of the time, you're not going to have a shadow directly under your cloud. Usually, it's somewhat shifted depending on where the sun is. Mm. So I'm just going to kind of pick a few spots. And honestly, that's not even transparent enough for me. So let me see what I can do here. Probably didn't need as much white in there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of pick a few little spots. And actually, you know what? I know what it is. I want these to be somewhat green. Because uh, we're painting on a, a green, yeah. I was like, why does that not look right? It's because I was thinking gray for a shadow, which actually is a pretty good lesson because shadows are not always gray or dark or black. They often, they're reflecting often the colors that are around them. Mm. And usually the, usually they are a little cooler. If you have, if your light source is warm, then you're, the shadow side might be a little bit cooler, but it's not going to be like red or <laughs> the color completely um, non-existent in that area, right? Because it's it's a it's all related to the light. Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, that's a little better. I still think I can add a tiny bit more yellow. There we go. Okay, so just kind of some little ideas of shadows, and you know, shadows can be um, a little more black too elongated as well. So like just some little touches. Wow, cool. Yeah. And I might even blend those. If you don't want to use your finger, you don't have to. You can use like a paper towel or a, a brush. But I just want to kind of pick a few spots for some shadow. And that, that one's just really kind of just haphazard. I'm just kind of there. Okay. So I'm going to kind of keep my shadows mostly in this area here and call that good. Okay. So now let's just add a few more final touches and then we're, we are good. So we are good. I want to add a little bit of blue to my mountains because I love that. So I'm just going to kind of add a little more saturation and add just a couple little touches. So this is the point where I get to a painting. I'm like, okay, what little finishing details do I want to add? What kind of special little touches do I feel like would really make the painting or at least make me happy about it? And so I want to add a tiny bit of little blue touches to my mountains. Yes. Actually, I can even go bluer. There we go. I don't want it to lean green. I want it to lean more like blue, green, and teal. There we go. I feel like I can even go bluer. This is where the perfectionist in me starts to go. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know I'm filming. I know it, it could get really kind of long, but I want to get in there. We and love this process, Lori. I should probably do this. Yeah, like you should, I should probably paint you like should, for a living. You should. I, I think. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think I could do it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna kind of add some blue in there, and I'm gonna kind of stick to kind of this front range. Doesn't have to be a lot, and you don't have to do this if you want your mountains to stay how they were. Then go for it. See what I'm doing now. I'm just kind of. Not thinking about what I'm doing, not thinking about the fact that I'm teaching. I'm just kind of getting into the process. And honestly, like that's that's why I paint is because it's fun. I feel good, and I just feel like I can just go and just try some things. And if I don't like it, paint over it. We're good. Oh, see, that's what I like. Mm. I like the little bit more blue. I might even add a touch of white. Okay, there you go. Just I'm just gonna go boop, boop, boop. and then I'm gonna kind of spread that out just a tiny bit. Okay, what do you think? I like 
like that? Yeah, I like that. I was <laughs> I not. Like Keenan's always going to say, "I like it." I, I was like not it. expecting you to put <laughs> blue in there. Okay, so while I have this blue, I'm going to um, brush most of it off. At, in my like art area, studio area, I have paper covering the counters, and so I am very used to just painting on my counter. But for those of you at home, if you <laughs> make sure that your surface underneath is um, okay to paint on if you're going to kind of copy what I'm doing. Anyway. This craft paper is super useful. It is. Yeah, this is just craft paper from like the hardware store mm -hmm. that was meant for putting down as like a drop cloth for painting like yeah. walls. It's like a big roll. But, you know, we're painting uh, we're painting clouds and landscapes today yeah, we and are. we need we need a drop cloth. All right. So, I'm going to take I have a light blue here and I'm going to try to wipe off most of it and then I'm going to come in here and kind of um, I want it to be really fluid. I don't want, so that means more watery. So I don't want it to go, that's pretty strong. So let me add a lot more white. I just want to add kind of a little touch of blue in our clouds. Now that we're kind of on our final, final passes. There we go. So I'm going to kind of add it in a couple little places. There we go. You might not even be able to see that on camera. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see well, Very subtle. Can you see it on the side? Yeah, hand? we can see it. Yay. Okay. And then I, I don't want to put it everywhere. So I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it there with my few little touches that I did. And now um, I think, I think all we're going to do is add some straight white to our clouds and we're done. Wow. We're going to have it. Yeah. All right. So I'm cleaning out my brush, wiping off here. And I'm going to go for some straight white now. I really like the Smoky Mountains. Oh. And uh, I'm also familiar with, um, I believe it's the Rocky Mountains there. John and Denver sang about those. Yep. <laughs> yep. He sure did. We, uh, wait, did he? I don't actually know. Wait. I just, I've seen. <laughs> I'm like, John Denver. I've wait, are you? I've seen. <laughs> I would assume. Yeah, sure. I sure. But quoting, I'm like, wait, is he uh, trying to trick me? Because his, his name is John Denver. The movie Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Might be your first problem. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Quoting the movie Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> touche I'm kidding. Touche. I am so kidding. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a few places where I, and I'm using my smaller brush, and I'm just going to add some little highlights. So I'm going to make one here, and I'm going to make one there. Ooh, the like dry there. brush stroke. Yes. And I want to vary my, the size, width, width length of my strokes. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pick a few other places where I wanna add a little touch of white. Here we go. Okay, I think, I think we got it. Take off that little glob. When you're done, sign your painting. You made this, sign it and be proud of it. Let's hold it up. Sign it. Yes. So here is our mountain landscape. Woo. I hope you enjoyed painting this with us. And if you did paint it, please share it on social media. You can go to Facebook at our, in our acrylic group. It's let's make, let's say Facebook at let's make art acrylic. You can also go on Instagram and share it at let's go make art. Can't wait to see what you made.